Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we have a very exciting breaking story. OpenAI has released their long-anticipated latest model. This has variously been known as Strawberry and QSTAR. It has been rumored and leaked for going on 10 months now, and it seems to represent the next big leap for LLMs. This news is less than an hour old, so we're going to be breaking down what OpenAI has told us so far and what people's first impressions are. The company tweets, we're releasing a preview of OpenAI 01, a new series of AI models designed to spend more time thinking before they respond. These models can reason through complex tasks and solve harder problems than previous models in science, coding, and math. So right out of the gate, we have confirmation of some of the things that we had heard reported. These models have a process where they spend 10 to 20 seconds, quote unquote, thinking, and they are pushing the parameters when it comes to how they reason. Going over to the blog post to learn more, OpenAI writes, we train these models to spend more time thinking through problems before they respond, much like a person would. Through training, they learn to refine their thinking process, try different strategies, and recognize their mistakes. Now, OpenAI says that this reasoning approach means that these models are especially good for those who are working on problems around science, coding, or math. Alongside the announcement, they released a couple videos of examples of people taking advantage of these new capabilities. Author, thinker, and professor Tyler Cowen effectively asked O1 to write a college essay. Geneticist Catherine Brownstein asked O1 to help her reason through N of 1 medical cases, which are medical cases that nobody has ever seen. Mario Kren used O1 to draft and reason through complex quantum physics equations. And Hong Yu Ren prompted a full snake game that was generated zero shot, working perfectly, and as summed up by Swix, obeyed instructions to add obstacles. The example that I've seen shared most on Twitter is the coding example. I want to show an example of a coding prompt that O1 Preview is able to do, but previous models might struggle with. And the coding prompt is to write the code for a very simple video game called Squirrel Finder. And the reason O1 Preview is better at doing prompts like this is when it wants to write a piece of code, it thinks before giving the final answer. So it can use the thinking process to plan out the structure of the code, make sure it fits the constraints. So let's try pasting this in. And to give a brief overview of the prompt, um, the game Squirrel Finder basically has a koala that you can move using the arrow keys. Um, strawberries spawn every second and they bounce around. And you want to avoid the strawberries. After three seconds, a squirrel icon comes up and you want to find the squirrel to win. And there are a few other instructions, like um, putting OpenAI in the game screen and displaying instructions before the game starts, etc. So first, you can see that the model thought for 21 seconds before giving the final answer. And you can see that during its thinking process, it is gathering details on the game's layout, mapping out the instructions, setting up the screen, etc. And so here's the code that it gave and I will paste it into a, uh, into a window and we'll see if it works. So you've seen there's instructions um, and let's try to play the game. Oh, the squirrel came very quickly. But, oops, this time I was hit by a strawberry. Let's try again. You can see that the strawberries are appearing uh, and let's see if I can win by finding the squirrel. Looks like I won. So what's actually going on behind the scenes? One of the things that's interesting about this announcement is that you can tell how excited the team at OpenAI is as numerous members of their research team have taken to Twitter slash X to share more of the background. Noam Brown writes, Today I'm excited to share with you the fruit of our effort at OpenAI, pun intended, strawberry, to create AI models capable of truly general reasoning. Noam continues saying that this is not a one-off improvement, but a new scaling paradigm. He writes, O1 is trained with RL to think before responding via a private chain of thought. The longer it thinks, the better it does on reasoning tasks. This opens up a new dimension for scaling. We're no longer bottlenecked by pre-training, we can now scale inference compute too. Now, as we'll see, Noam continues in a vein that started with Sam Altman, of also at the same time while being excited, downplaying just how advanced O1 is. Noam writes, our O1 models aren't always better than GPT-4.0. Many tasks don't need reasoning, and sometimes it's not worth it to wait for an O1 response versus a quick GPT-4.0 response. One motivation for releasing O1 preview is to see what use cases become popular and where the models need work. 
He shared a chart of human preferences by domain, showing that, for example, when it came to personal writing and editing text, GPT-40 and O1 were pretty equivalent, with people actually preferring GPT-40 a little bit more than O1 when it came to writing. When it comes to programming, data analysis, and mathematical calculation, however, O1 starts to take a bigger lead. Gnome continues, Also, OpenAI O1 preview isn't perfect. It sometimes trips up even on tic-tac-toe. People will tweet failure cases, but on many popular examples people have used to show LLMs can't reason, O1 preview does much better. O1 does amazing, and we know how to scale it even further. Greg Kamrat actually shared one of these examples. He tweeted, This is the question I use to stump all LLMs. What is your fourth word in response to this message? O1 preview got it right first try. Something's different about this one. Greg showed a screenshot of him asking, What is your fourth word in response to this message? To which O1 thought for 13 seconds and said, The fourth word in my response to this message is in. Interestingly, O1 also shows a little bit of its work. So when you click on that thought for 13 seconds button, it shows you that what it did was analyze the instructions, assessing the response, under which it writes, I'm trying to figure out what the assistant should say to accurately identify the fourth word in its response. It's tricky to pinpoint without context, but I'm considering phrasing like, my fourth word in response is X. The other steps in that 13 seconds of thinking, including organizing the response, weighing options, and identifying the response. Back to Noam Brown again, he next argues that this approach is not bound to just this 10 to 20 seconds of thinking. He writes, O1 thinks for seconds, but we aim for future versions to think for hours, days, even weeks. Inference costs will be higher, but what cost would you pay for a new cancer drug? For breakthrough batteries? For a proof of the Riemann hypothesis? AI can be more than chatbots. Lucas Kaiser added additional context around how to think about this, and emphasized some of the same points. He writes, leading this research with my colleagues for almost three years and working on related ideas even longer convinced me it's a new paradigm. Models that train hidden chain of thoughts are more powerful than raw transformers learn from less data, and generalize better. Jason Way, who you just saw or heard in that video about the coding example, writes, Super excited to finally share what I've been working on at OpenAI. O1 is a model that thinks before giving the final answer. In my own words, here are the biggest updates to the field of AI. One, don't do chain of thought purely via prompting. Train models to do better chain of thought using RL. Two, in the history of deep learning, we have always tried to scale training compute, but chain of thought is a form of adaptive compute that can be scaled at inference time. Three, results on AIME and GPQA, which are benchmarks, are really strong, but that doesn't necessarily translate to something that a user can feel. Even as someone working in science, it's not easy to find the slice of prompts where GPT-40 fails, O1 does well, and I can grade the answer. But when you do find such prompts, O1 feels totally magical. We all need to find harder prompts. Four, AI models chain of thought using human language is great in so many ways. The model does a lot of human-like things, like breaking down tricky steps into simpler ones, recognizing and correcting mistakes, and trying different approaches. Would highly encourage everyone to look at the chain of thought examples in the blog post. The game has been totally redefined. Now, one other small announcement that's likely to get buried a little bit in here is that in addition to O1 Preview, they're also releasing O1 Mini. OpenAI's William Fetus writes, As part of today, we're also releasing O1 Mini. This is an incredibly smart, small model that can also reason before its answer. O1 Mini allows us to make high intelligence widely accessible. On the AIME benchmark, O1 Mini redefines the intelligence plus cost frontier. He then shares a chart of math performance versus inference cost, which is a radical improvement from GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini. Now, as this is just released, we haven't had the community have a chance to really dig into it yet, but one of the stats that people are grabbing onto from the announcement post is that in a qualifying exam for the International Mathematics Olympiad, GPT-40 correctly solved only 13% of problems, while the reasoning model scored 83%. Still, like I said, OpenAI's team members are also going to pains to make sure there's not too much hype. Joanne Jang writes, What O1 is, the first reasoning model that shines in really hard tasks, and it'll only get better. What O1 isn't yet, a miracle model that does everything better than previous models. You might be disappointed if this is your expectation for today's launch, but we're working to get there. Sam Altman himself did some of that caveating in his main post as well, saying O1 is still flawed, still limited, and it still seems more impressive on first use than it does after you spend more time with it. But also, he writes, this is the beginning of a new paradigm, AI that can do general purpose complex reasoning. In terms of looking for where the new models are going to outperform, one little piece of evidence comes from Gabe Perriera, the president and co-founder of Harvey. He writes, OpenAI's O1 model is preferred 70% of the time by big law attorneys over GPT-40 for complex legal queries. Harvey has been using Strawberry to build legal agents, and we are super excited by the step change improvement. And for many, the best part of the announcement was that finally OpenAI is back to just releasing the thing that they announced right there. 
No wait list, no coming soon. O1 Mini and O1 Preview are available to all Plus and Team users today. I, for one, am going to run over there and start experimenting, and I'm sure I will have more to share with you on that soon. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.